In October 2020, I got my first brand new greenhouse. It was a dream for a long time. And ever since then, I've been learning how to use it. And I will tell you, I've enjoyed it so much. I've had a lot of people ask me questions about it. So I thought I would give you the grand tour. <laughs> my daughter. <laughs> She finds me in here quite a bit. If you can't find me anywhere else in the house, they say to check the greenhouse because this is the most fun place to be. So let's just show you around what I've got going on here in the greenhouse. When I'm recording this, we are just around our average last frost date. And so there are some things still growing in here on their way to getting out in the garden. So over here, I added a wire shelf this year just because even though this is quite a big amount of space, I liked having more room to be able to put my plants here. As you can tell, I've got some loofah and some cantaloupe, watermelon. I've got some milkweed going here. All of this I've started this year. My sweet potatoes that I started from slips here and then I've transplanted in here. We've got chamomile. And then over here we have some grow bag tomatoes and these tomatoes I started earlier than I would start any other tomato because I knew that I could have them in the greenhouse for longer and hopefully I'll be able to have a much earlier harvest of tomatoes here. These are slicing tomatoes so we'll be able to use them for salsa and bruschetta and all that kind of thing. Most of the tomatoes I grow in my main garden are for canning so these are going to be more of your fresh eating tomatoes. Moving on over here, this may be my favorite place in the greenhouse, not just because my daughter's here, but because I love to just sit in the greenhouse, have a comfy chair. This is one reason I chose to have a larger greenhouse than I initially thought I would need because I wanted it to be a place that I would be able to come, especially in the winter when it's sunny, it gets really warm and comfortable. It's a good place to garden plan. It's a good place to indoor seed start, even though I take my indoor seeds to my grow room under grow lights. It's just a fun place to be coming out here to read and to do things just to have a little bit of peace and quiet. So moving on over here, we've got more grow bags. This I've got an early planting of pumpkin and then also cucumber. Again, I'm just trying to stretch the season a little bit because I knew that I could keep them warm and growing in the greenhouse. The soil would be warmer here than, they, than it would be out in the garden. So that's why I'm starting those a little bit earlier. And then here we've got some tomatoes that are getting ready to go out into the garden, some basil, uh, peppers, and sometimes, depending on what time of year it is, this whole section is full of starts. I've already started planting out a lot of my plants into the garden, so that's why there's just a few left. But it's really nice just to be able to have these here to get plenty of sun. I love having this window here because I can open it up and get a breeze. This not only helps to cool the greenhouse in the heat, but it also is a way that I can allow the plants to start getting acclimated to wind, especially on windy days. I'll put my tomatoes here or over here on this bench and then the breeze will come through and it'll get them a little bit stronger. So a lot of people put fans in their grow rooms for this and I just try to put my plants in front of the windows to get them stronger with the wind. The shelving on either side came with the greenhouse, but this is something that my husband built for me. I like having the ability to roll it. So if I need a little bit more space, I can move it out of the way or I can even roll it over here to the back side of the greenhouse. Most of the time I find myself working on this and then I'll end up putting my plants on the other shelves. And so this has been a really nice thing to be able to have in the middle of the room itself. As you can see, I can put extra plants on this shelf as well, but right now it's a loofah storage area. If I needed the space, I obviously could put more plants up here, but it works for me. And then over here we have another shelf for working and I've created a little bit of a storage area. A lot of people ask me about these bins. These are pet food bins that I got off of Amazon and I put my potting soil and my seed starting mix and any other thing. I think one of them has vermiculite in here so that I can keep that a little bit better organized. I think that was my, one of my biggest challenges when I first started in here was trying to find an organization system that works because it's easy to let a greenhouse get cluttered and the last thing I want to do is to have it cluttered. So I like to, as well as I can, have creative ways that I can organize things if you'll notice here, these shelves, a lot of people ask me where I got these shelves. 
These actually came from one of those kind of pop-up tent greenhouses that you can get on Amazon or at Walmart um, that have the little uh, plastic coat covering on it. These are the shelves from there, so I just um, disassembled those and put them in here for extra storage. Coming over here, I have a little bit of a water jug. I will say that this isn't the most ideal thing for the greenhouse just because I wish that I had a water source. I find myself needing to drag the water hose out here quite a bit, but for small little areas of irrigation, I like to have this filled up as much as I can and I'm able to irrigate some of my plants that way. But especially during the seed starting season when I've got a lot of plants in here, I end up bringing the water hose in the greenhouse. Thankfully, we're not too far away from the house, but it'd still be nice to have a water source. This is a bin that I mainly use for compost. So anything, any kind of refuse that I have working out here, I'll put it in here and then take it to the compost area. This is actually new for me this year. This is an elevated planter from Good Ideas. And I thought, let's see what we could do as far as pushing the season's boundaries and starting early season crops a little earlier. And so far it's worked out really well. I'm actually kind of on the tail end of this greens mix and this lettuce that I planted earlier than I would have been able to plant these, these crops out in the main garden. And now I'm doing a succession planting of beans. So I've got the beans actually that are coming up earlier than they would if they had been in the garden. That's a big thing that I've learned with using the greenhouse is I'm just able to get a little bit more time out of my crops at the beginning of the season and then get more time out of them toward the end of the season into the fall with the greenhouse. Whether or not the greenhouse is heated, it definitely does that for me. But one thing that I've done this year that I didn't do over last winter is I actually have been using a heater. This is new for me. Uh, we've had this. I don't really know where I got it. We've had it for a long time. I did use the heater in the greenhouse for the early spring this year, but I did notice a difference how I was able to keep the warm season crops in the greenhouse instead of having to lug them in and out of the house. One thing that I did notice last year, and I'm glad I didn't have my heater because I was able to learn this, is that an unheated greenhouse is not any warmer than the outside temperature at night. The thing is, is that the greenhouse is gonna get warm during the, the sunny days, but at night, it's gonna be the same temperature inside as outside. Now, it does protect from frost, and I was able to get some of my warm season crops, they were fine in the greenhouse on some of those like borderline nights, right around 32, they were okay in the greenhouse where they probably would have died out in the garden. But overall, once I started heating the greenhouse, I was able to consistently get about a 10 to 15 degree warmer air temperature in the greenhouse. And I know that because I have a thermometer in the greenhouse and I'm able to check on it with an app on my phone so that I can always uh, keep an eye on the temperature in the greenhouse. Probably one of the coolest features of the greenhouse is the ventilation. You notice that I do have windows and we have a cross breeze here, but that's not the only thing. But the greenhouse does come with a way to vent itself. This is actually pretty ingenious. From what I understand, it's beeswax that expands when the temperature gets above 70 or 75 degrees and it automatically opens and then when it gets a little bit cooler it will automatically close so I have the ventilation that's already gonna happen without me having to come in and open the windows and open the doors but on really really hot days I definitely like to have the windows open and the doors open because it still gets pretty hot but at least we do have the ventilation um, in both sides of the greenhouse Probably the two most common questions I get about my greenhouse is, did we build it ourselves and how big is it? Well, the answer to number one is no, we didn't build it ourselves. Even though my husband builds a lot of stuff, we ended up buying this from a company called Yoderbilt. They are based in Arkansas, but they also have another distribution center. And if you live within a certain mile radius of one of those places, then they will deliver for you. This greenhouse in particular was actually on a dealer's lot. And so I was able to buy it as a, at a discount and they delivered it to me. Even though I bought it off of a dealer's lot, they're now exclusively selling direct to consumers. So if you live within a certain mileage of radius from 
Yoderbuilt, then they can deliver it to you. And you can choose what size you want, if you want windows, what kind of shelving you want, um, what thickness of the plastic you want. There's all sorts of things that you can choose. Uh, most everything that I wanted in my dream greenhouse, I got in this one, so it actually worked out well for me. But no, we didn't build it ourselves. We bought it, they installed it. All we did is we added a gravel padding for them to install it and put it in place here. And I couldn't be happier with it. It's been a wonderful addition. Size wise, this is a 12 by 16 greenhouse. And what I love about this space is the width. Yes, you can get it in an eight foot width and I think that would be perfectly fine, but I loved having the extra space so I can have more room to walk around. And I like having the length again so that I could have the extra space to be able to have a sitting area. That was really important to me, but they sell greenhouses as small as an eight by eight. If you're wanting just something simple to be able to um, extend your season, you can get a smaller one as well. And they also sell much larger ones. Overall, as I said, the greenhouse has been such a lovely addition to my garden. I've enjoyed it more than I ever thought that I would. And to be honest, gardening in an Arkansas Zone 7B climate, I was really worried that I would be able to get maximum benefit from this because a lot of people that use greenhouses are from climates that are much colder than mine. And I will admit, I don't spend much time in here in the heat of the summer, but in the fall and in the winter, in the early spring, it has been so enjoyable. And it's been something that I have never regretted. I would highly recommend anyone that is thinking about or considering a greenhouse to go ahead and take the leap if you can, because I think that you will thoroughly enjoy it yourself.